Is this this is an induction stove? It is. How do the ovens work with these things? Oh, they also work pretty well. Well, those are just normal ovens. Yeah. They just Microwave, normal combination, It's a combination, grill, yes. Steamers. Oh. Yeah, they got everything in them. They're pretty cool. So, they work pretty well. And have some windows and stuff. Yeah. Oh, okay, this is the pantry. Most boats don't have those kind of things, but uh, so this this opens up, and it's, that's our food storage. Oh, well, that's a lot of food storage, and handy too. And handy. You're yes. not creeping around in some dark no. space. Yes. Yeah. Well, that was Marie's kind of thing, and then the the, the seats were. This is space behind the seats. Ooh. For our glasses and. These no. are all custom touches. Yeah. We've got air conditioning ducting running at the back over here through a, a single chiller system. Fridge freezer, dishwasher. Cool. Big television. <laughs> so this is oh, the lounge. Is. Yeah, this is the lounge. Nice. This is where I watch YouTube. <laughs> With your remote control? Absolutely. <laughs> you don't have. I didn't notice a satellite dish on top. No. Good for you. No. Yeah. It's all about YouTube. Only YouTube. Cabin number one of how many? We have three now. We used to have six and a crew cabin. Now we just have three. So this would be, this is my son's cabin. Okay. When they come and visit, or we have people staying over. And they, he's got an ensuite. That's it, yeah, that's the shower. And inside of here, you can just have a look at the toilet too. Ah, that's very nice and fancy. Uh, people always wanna know. Yeah. What kind of heads are they? They are electric heads, fresh water flush. Fresh water flush. Smell. And they don't break, because there's no rusting going on. You don't get the scale. And we don't get the scale. So they just work. Mm -hmm. But you need a water maker. Spoken because we use more water in flushing it down the toilet than we do drinking. And really, yeah. really. Yeah. Well, freshwater flush, frequently, in my experience, people who do freshwater flush, it's because they've rebuilt a head a couple times. <laughs> right. <laughs> and they're like, never again. Or as, at least as little as possible. All right, so where are we now? Now we're in the study. Okay. I call it the study. It was going to be my nav station study area. This is one of the mistakes. Okay. I hardly ever use this area. So it used to be a big cabin in here, double bed, ensuite toilet. Now it's storage. Our air conditioning unit is inside here. This is the chiller unit. So there's the chiller unit. How many units do you have? So we've only got two. We've got one chiller unit here. Okay. And that serves all of the boat except for our side and we've got our own air conditioning unit for our side so why because we're on the boat alone okay there's no point in running air conditioning for the whole boat when we're only occupying one side yeah. that's a big power draw for nothing because you were telling me your power draw for your ac is how many amps uh well i draw i'll tell you in watts okay watts. <laughs> about 450 watts for our side of the boat okay the rest of the boat on an eco setting once we've reached the temperature that we need to reach it it'll consistently keep it at that temperature using about 16 1700 watts for the rest of the boat gotcha so it's at least four times more but that includes all of the the rest of the so boat. so if you get a full boat it's you, two kilowatts I'm using. Okay. Yeah. And we're going to talk a lot about batteries and generators and motors and stuff here in a second. Okay. Forward. Oh, very spacious. So do you consider this your guest hall then? Yeah. yeah. Well, yes. It, yeah. This yeah. is the guest kind of wing. Let's put it you that way. This is my daughter's room. On a boat this size, you say wing. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's the, this is the guest wing. Okay. Nice. Separate shower. So this would be the master hall. This the master stateroom and yes. Okay. Uh -huh. 
So this is the air conditioning does all of this, whatever we're going to do now. And you can see carpets going up so the dog can get up. <laughs> <laughs> Pleasures of a small dog. That's one thing Sugar can't do, she cannot get up on the bed. Right. No. She would. <laughs> she <laughs> would if she could. Yeah. Wow, this is very, very um, just relaxing. It is. I love this cabin. It's very comfortable. It's very... Uh, it seems quiet to me. Yes, it is. Is it just because we're in a quiet anchorage, or no? It's quiet. It's, it's you insulated. I did everything's insulated. Yeah, yes. that makes That's sense. That's why it's a little cooler than probably most boats, because I do have insulation makes everywhere. Yeah. yeah, That's not a standard feature, and you know, for the price, it was worth doing. Yeah, absolutely. It was very inexpensive. Self-adhesive stuff, and we got space under the bed for storage, and we got space here, and yeah. So this is a lot of storage. Walk through closet. Yeah. Clothing. Just clothing. Nice, nice. And And these are all custom as well. Yes, yes. These are made this all same cardboard. Uh all same cardboard stuff, yeah. yeah. So that's just pretty much just uh, oh, yeah, washing the area. We had to replace this lightning strike. This is a washer and dryer. Washer and dryer. Yeah. yeah. That's we've got nice. an air conditioning got... vent over here to dry the clothes, and we've got the hatch up. So that's how it was designed, so we can open it up and it can dry the clothes as nice. well. Nice, nice, cool. Because the dryer is what uses the power. Yeah, yeah. Does it use a condenser to dry? Uh, it does. Yeah. Yes. It uses a little extra water. <laughs> yes, a little bit of extra <laughs> water as well. <laughs> Even more than the wash. Yes. All right. So B-Day toilet. Ah. That's great stuff. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I love the B-Day toilet. <laughs> so this whole side does not look anything like the original at all. Mm -hmm. Nothing like the original. Total side. remodel. Total. Everything was ripped out and everything was replaced. It's just a big shower. We got a rain shower down from the top. It's great. <laughs> <laughs> I love that bit. <laughs> and this is supposed to look like a heated towel rail mm -hmm. and a mirror. But actually, it's a ladder and a door. Oh, oh hello. Wow. And yeah. this is the storeroom. And another Spectra client. Yes. I am a big fan of Spectra. Right. Um, people have been going to these much less expensive modular yeah. 110 systems. Yes. I'm a big fan of the I 12 like and the 24. I DC. Yeah. So um, that's a DC one and... I wouldn't have it any other way. Yeah. You get to recapture a whole bunch of the energy. I'm going to geek out just for a second. But this right here, I haven't shown you on our boat, is called a Clark pump. And this is where the return feed from the membranes, these are the membranes right here, the return feed goes back to the top end and through a series of what would you even call them? They're like, they're like valves. Yeah, little kind of, valves, yeah. They are putting pushing. the energy back on the back side of the pump head. Yes, they're actually pushing, yeah. yeah. So the only thing that is driving that pump is a smaller pump with uh, quite a bit of pressure and the back pressure in ass assisting it. Exactly. Yeah. I don't remember the numbers completely, but your feed is somewhere in the 100 to 200 range. Correct. And then the output pressure with the membrane, is it 2,000? 800. It's 800 PSI, yeah. so it, it's boosting it way up. Yeah. I want to look at the electrical system. You're going to have to climb in there up the heated towel rail. <laughs> well, my knee's a little bit bum right now, so I'm just Sorry. going to kind of butt scoot. Oh, look at these. Oh, yeah, you got the uh, the blue solar, the Victron Energy, and you got four of them. I get what you're saying now. And on the other wall, the back wall, that's the inverters and charges and everything. Wow. So you got two, 300... Or 3,000? I've got two 5,000. Two 5,000. Okay, and those can run together. They can. Yeah. I've got them separate. So yeah. I, again, I run it the way Victron doesn't say you should run it. So you get this thing called acquiescent draw okay. from an inverter. If, if it's on and you're not really using anything, it's still going to take some power to power itself and have the electricity available. If you've got two powering together parallel, you've got twice the acquiescent draw. Uh, I realized this in my first installation. Um, so when I replaced the stuff, I wired it slightly differently. Mm -hmm. So one inverter is pretending to be shore power, and the other one is the inverter. It makes sense. So one is going to see that the other one comes on, and it's going to say, okay, well, yes. I'm not needed. I'm not needed, or I only 
help because they've got this assist power assist function in there. So mm. <clears throat> when Marie's cooking, she switches it on because the that oven draws quite a lot, and so it'll work the in the short power inverter to its maximum, and then it'll supplement with the other one if she goes over the limit. Cost on this boat. Four hundred and fifty. Four hundred fifty plus the original boat, and the original boat was about a million uh, many years ago. Two thousand and three is about a million. What would you guess the market value was when you started? I would say, with the engines not working too well, the no, gen no, no, sets no. gone, that what kind of thing. No. What I could sell it for? No, what would it have been on yacht world? I'd probably be able to get five fifty. So you're in just under a mil. Yeah. This is a hell of a book for a million dollars. Yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah, but it's still a million. It's still a million dollars. <laughs> That's a lot of money. Yeah. <laughs> and I'll probably sell it for, what, nine fifty. <laughs> so, do you have any, like, advice to somebody who's like, I have a passion for making a boat my own. Yeah. I am not scared away by the dollars. Yeah. What would you say to somebody who's interested in that? Um... If you're not afraid of the dollars and you want to create your own boat, there, um, there are places that you can have the boat built from scratch. And in some cases, that'll actually work out cheaper. There's some uh, shining designs where they don't use molds. That is a really good way to get a very light, well-manufactured boat. And there's a few people, they'll do them in Australia, Thailand, and South Africa. Um, Those are rocket ships. And they go like, you look at an Utrame and you go, <laughs> Yeah. It's going to just kill that boat. Exactly. Um, the space is not quite the same. So it's a speed boat. The ride is rough. The ride is rough. It's a speed boat. We surveyed one. You did? A 49. Yeah. Ah, yeah. nice boats. Oh yeah, it's really nice. But I think on a cruising boat, you want a boat that's a little heavy. Yeah. You live on the thing. I'm with you. You want to have a boat that's good at anchor. Yeah. Um, and you want a boat that can get somewhere reasonably quickly. You don't want a houseboat that doesn't sail at all very well. Um, I think the sailing is the trade-off. Uh, a heavier boat is probably better for the, just for the motion. I mean, a catamaran, like catamaran, it's not a pleasant experience. Yeah. It's a day sail and then you've had enough. Uh, three hours. <laughs> exactly. So it's, uh, I would say, go for it. If, yeah. you, if, if you're not, you can, you can get these boats built and you can get them built the way you want them built instead of spending a whole bunch of money taking out what is old and doesn't suit what you want to do and then having to put new stuff in can kind of sometimes work out more expensive but if you can get a deal on a stuffed up boat somewhere and that's okay like this boat was kind of stuffed up you'd have to replace the engines you'd have to do a whole bunch we didn't have to do any of this stuff that was looking fine actually I mean, when Marie said, you know, it's, it's okay, you don't have to do that. Yeah. Yeah, I want to. We didn't have to do it. <laughs> it would have cost, we would have been in for maybe a hundred. So the electric motors and the batteries and all of that stuff, maybe a hundred, hundred and fifty. Okay. The rest of the things was what added up. It's the, the physical work on making the boat look good and all of the components you buy is much more expensive than an electric motor, batteries, chargers, inverters. Yeah. That's actually the cheap side. Well, let's talk. Let's talk electric, man. Right. It's the it's the future. Absolutely. All right. It's the future. <laughs> electric motors. I would say that any boat producer today making a production boat that doesn't consider electric isn't doing their research and they're gonna lose out it's a no-brainer um, battery technology is all that we've needed to make this worthwhile and we've got them now so lithium-ion batteries are more than capable and I'm sure there's gonna be different battery technologies that are gonna come out in the future that are just gonna kill lithium ions but they eat up pretty much as much power as you can put in and you can take out about as much power as you want out of them. And that's the key, because the electric motors use a lot of electricity to operate. You, there is a small problem with electrics, and that is range. You cannot possibly have enough battery power on your boat to support the cruising lifestyle. Um, for a weekend vessel, yeah, 
no big deal. Two, three hours here and there, great. Sun charges it up, great. But if you're going for a six day trip and it's bad weather and you need to motor for two days, you can't. So you do need some kind of diesel anyway. And that diesel will be turned into DC power, so a DC gen set so that you can charge your batteries up. So no more AC anything anymore is the way to go, regardless of whether you go electric motors or not. Um, DC gen sets and lithium ion batteries are at the minimum requirement nowadays. Um, then you can go for electric, saves a lot of weight. Uh, the torque on these motors is ludicrous. Like Tesla, it's ludicrous. So the difference between an electric motor and a diesel motor is if you want to go fast, then you have a diesel. If you want torque, then you go electric. So electric, you need less power, but you will go slower. They cannot go as fast. It's, it's, it's a completely different way of thinking about motoring on a, on a yacht. So we will do five and a half knots, six knots with one gen set running, keeping the batteries topped up. And before we'd be doing maybe seven knots. This boat could do 10 knots with the 150 horsepower that it had. Now it can do maybe eight knots. Um, but in a strong current, strong winds, I can still maintain with very little power I can still do four knots whereas I would be using some diesel to go into a head sea and a headwind with the engines would be revving and using a lot more power the nice thing about the electrics is motor sailing which we do a little bit of there's just not quite enough breeze to get you going and you just click those things in just to get rid of a little bit of the friction and you can just whoop two knots I'm using hardly any power and the, the, it's, I could probably do that for 10, 11 hours on the batteries and we'd be doing two extra knots motor sailing. Um, and then when the boat's really starting to move, that motor becomes a, a, re, a regen generator. Um, so you could say, right, I'm going to do four knots. And if the boat's doing seven, we're making power. And if it's going below four knots, we, it's powering us so that we never go below four knots. That's great. The other side effect, which nobody really tells you about, and I think it's maybe the most convenient thing and it's a safety factor, is you're surfing down waves downwind. You're going at a decent speed, you've got the spinnaker up, or, um, and you've got a following sea, and you're surfing some waves. When you increase speed, your rig loses load. The spinnaker wants to kind of little collapse. Then you get to the bottom of that wave, the spinnaker loads up, your rig loads up, pop. and pop, and off you go, and it pulls you again. Now, when you're regenerating, the faster you go, the more drag you've got. So when you start surfing, that thing pulls you back, keeps your sails loaded up. When you get to the bottom of that wave, you slow down a little bit, there's less friction, and it lets you go. So it doesn't. we can go with a spinnaker while we're regening, and we don't have to even worry about it, because it's keeping the load on that spinnaker. That is a massive selling point mm -hmm. for an electric motor mm -hmm. um, you know and you're making electricity all the time while you're doing it um, whereas if you're getting down windows wind generators then they're doing nothing no. um, depending on where the Sun is that spinnaker is blanking out everything on your solar panels um, so they do help out a lot so let's talk numbers let's talk yeah. turkey um, let's start with the how big is the battery Okay, so we have two banks. We've got a propulsion bank and a house bank. Our propulsion bank is 24 kilowatt hours. So we work in, work, work in kilowatt hours because amps and amp hours is only half the story. You need to know the voltage otherwise. So when somebody says, oh, I've got 200 amps, I'm saying at what, at voltage? what voltage to know how much power is in there. Now, everyone normally talks 12 volts. So when boaters are talking to each other, they know what they're talking about. But for me, it doesn't work that way because I'm running 48 volts and 24, not 12. So I talk in kilowatt hours. So on a 20, so if we have 24 kilowatt hours, that would be in the region of about two and a half thousand, 2,200 amp hours of lithium. Of lithium. 
And you can draw that down to... 20%. 20%. I go to about 15 sometimes, but on the propulsion bank, I like sticking a little high because if I really need those motors, I don't want the voltage to drop. Right. The BMS will kick in and say there's something wrong. So I keep them above 20%. The house bank, I drop to about 15. And once again, how big is the house bank? The house bank is eight kilowatt hours. Um, so that is about, what, 700 amp hours at a 12 yeah. volt system? About the same as us. Yeah, yeah, pretty similar. Okay, so that's the capacity. How are you putting those amps back in? I'm putting them in with the solar. Um, the solar gives me about, let's say, between 12 and 15 kilowatt hours in a day. Uh, so obviously that's not enough. The battery bank is, you know, 24. So even if we didn't use anything during the day and everything was off, and it's not going to charge my batteries up fully. So we don't, only when we're motoring are we using that kind of power. The, we don't use that. We use about eight to nine kilowatt hours a day. And the sun is more than enough to keep going. If we run the air conditioning at night, we're running at about 11, 12 kilowatt hours. And so on a shady day, we we'll have to wait for an us sunny. We don't want three shady days in a row. Uh, otherwise, we're good. Hmm. Otherwise, we're using regen and we got diesel gensets, DC gensets to top up. So everything's kind of automatic. So the solar will charge. Uh, if the house bank drops to below, let's say 15%, it switches a charger on, which gets power from the 48 volt bank. And charges the house bank up and uh, so that's the only way the house bank gets charged is solar and the 48 volt propulsion bank of course when we're regenning it's going into the propulsion bank so we're just getting that back it's not the most efficient way of doing things um, you, you would just want the sun or something directly in there, but we're going through 48 volts converted into 230 and then converted back into 24 to put it into our 24 volt bank. It's We're losing a good 20%. Um, so that only happens when the batteries get flat. So if you were going to redesign the system, if you're going to start from scratch, yes. anything you'd do different? Yes. Um, it's a bit difficult to do it differently um, because of the electric propulsion. I think I would have gone 12 volt everything. Uh, I really would have. A little bit bigger wires, big deal. Just everything's cheaper to buy and everything's easier to install and everyone understands it. So 12 volt is probably what I would have gone on my house bank. Problem with that is I've got a, an engine that uses 48 volts. They're not mm -hmm. 12 volt electric propulsion systems. Um, possibly going for a big bank of 12 volts through an inverter to turn it into maybe 140 volts or a higher voltage motor. Now one can do that in the US. The, U, the, the EU, you've got a problem with marine stuff more than 48 volts. It's just kind of CE certificate. You're not getting it. Oh really? So it's a safety thing for them. I think it's silly because, but it is. Um, so I think that's what I would do different. I would have probably gone for a different kind of motor, um, not a 48 volt system, um, only because you can get nice efficient motors and the fact that your, your motors are being used less frequently than everything else on your boat, why are you catering for the motors first? Right. I would rather cater for the motors second. So rather lose a little bit of efficiency in those motors when you convert from the 12 volt to whatever voltage you require to run it and have everything else efficient and not have to, it's like less, then I'd have 38 charge controllers. <laughs> then if one panel got shaded, it would be like, well, big deal, man. But now I have to step up and I have to have at least one volt more than the maximum voltage that my batteries can reach in a series panel. So I've got to have five panels in series. Yeah. And if one of those panels gets shaded, that whole five of them all just drop to pretty much the output of the shaded one. So that's what I would do differently. Right. Yes. Right. And I have seen other boats with, you know, 15 or 20 charge controllers. And the, I think it, it's going to be expensive. <laughs> 25 charge controllers, but it'll be much more efficient. I'll probably get double the output from Invest these. Invest in Victron. 
All right, so yes. you have a lot of ocean miles before this boat and since. Yes. How's the sailing changed? The sailing has changed a lot. So with electric motors, you, you sail more. That's for sure. Most people will put their engines on and it's like, well, what we're doing now is we're getting some propulsion and the side effect is we're charging our batteries. Yeah. Mine is, I put the engine on, there's no side effect. It's, <laughs> it, it's we're using batteries. So there's, it's, it, you, you're not doing two things. Right. You're doing one and that's draining your batteries to go, f go somewhere. So that, that's what I find different. So I sail more. Now I used to sail a lot anyway, but I definitely sail a lot. Like now I would come into an anchorage in about a hundred yards from where I want to anchor. That's when I engage my engines and it's got, I don't have to warm them up. Just click, 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 go. So that's fine. And then I anchor and still use the motors to pull back on the anchor and that kind of stuff. So we use it for mooring and if we're in a marina, coming in and just doing the park. But we do sail a heck of a lot more than we used to because these motors would have pushed this boat at eight knots, nine knots. Um, and you're thinking, well, if I'm sailing slower than bringing seven knots, might as well motor, right? <laughs> now it's like four and a half to five knots. So it's not, we're still sailing at five. Because otherwise I drain my batteries for what, half a knot? Nah, it's not worth it. It's got to feel good though. It feels good. It's really quiet. Um, that's the one thing. Although it's not as quiet as I think people think. You don't realize how noisy your propellers are because your diesel engine is masking that noise. When you take that diesel engine away, you hear those propellers. You don't hear the engine, but those propellers are... You hear them. Um, but it is a lot more silent... Um, and it does, it, it feels pretty good, I have to say. I gotta say, this is a very sweet ride. This is exactly what I would do. If I had a couple of years and a thicker wallet, I'd, I would do something like this. I yeah. love the idea of the electric conversion. I mean, I just think it, it goes with my aesthetic about sailing. Wow. I enjoy the convenience, don't get me wrong. Yeah. Hey honey, uh, I'm hungry. I heard there was a good burger joint in this place. <laughs> Let's get there. <laughs> oh, and like you said, the batteries need to be topped off anyway. Correct. <laughs> But yeah. the aesthetic of not putting out so much exhaust Correct. and not being so wasteful yeah. and I don't know. So the servicing costs on an electric motor is the big thing yeah. for me. So people would normally have a gen set, an AC gen set. And to charge your batteries, you've got to run that thing pretty long. Because the conversion from AC through a charger, if you've got a nine kilowatt uh, gen set, you'll struggle to run six kilowatts worth of charge. It, it, your genset won't do it. it you're going to probably do five. Um, whereas a DC genset, you do nine That's with solid. the same motor. Mm -hmm. um, so there's too much loss. And so now that thing's running for five, six hours. Or you want AC. You're running it all night if you want to sleep with AC. We sleep with AC every night. So we put the air conditioner on, we go to sleep, it's 24 degrees Celsius, I don't know what that is, 72, <laughs> 73, whatever. Yeah. And that's just pleasant. We've got no genset running, so my cost to service the generator is zero. Or if it is running, if we didn't have, so the solar panels are worth one hour of my genset running. So if I didn't have solar panels, my genset would need to run for one hour a day for all my needs. That's one hour a day. That means that I'd have to service the motor one and a half times a year. I happen to have two for this exact reason, so that it's every two freaking years. Because I don't have to change the oil, I don't have to change a filter, I don't have to do anything to these motors for an entire year. Whereas you'd have to do that many times in a season if you were running that gen set a lot. Yeah. The other thing is running your engines. You've got oil changes to do on your engines. You've got filters to do on your engines. Yeah, you dust got, from the bells. You've got everything. Yeah, yeah. You've got alternators to deal with. You've yeah. got, I don't have that. I've literally got one DC gen set, that's it. That's the mechanical side of things. Hmm. The electric engines do not need, they're brushless, so there's no changing brushes, there's no carbon buildup, there's nothing should be able to go wrong with those things. And they're kind of sealed. Um, maybe a bearing could go eventually in the sail drive leg, uh, but that would happen with a normal sail drive, so it's nothing different. So the servicing for me, there's enough stuff to fix on a boat. <laughs> I don't want to do engines. and. Thank goodness um, I've only had to fix the gen set once because it might have been put together on a Friday, but it works well now, doesn't give me any, any trouble. And it just, 
pumps that electricity into the batteries. Well, well done. Thank you. I really love it, man. You did a fantastic <laughs> job with this boat, and it's inspiring to see. And I can't, I can't believe you did it in two years. I mean, this is an incredible job and an incredible amount of work. And Thank you. 24 months. You reckon it's worth a million? <laughs>